Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland. And I'm your host, Bill Stone. Well, today I want to talk to you about climate change, or what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says is their modern World War II. Now, if you don't know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, hereafter referred to simply as Red Cortez, because it fits and I can't remember how her name is pronounced half the time, even though I've heard it a million times. She is, of course, the darling of left-wing socialism at the moment, and she has stated in 2019 that we have 12 years before the entire world ends if we don't address climate change. And in fact, it is their generation's version of World War II. And here, I'll let you listen to it in her own stupid words. And we're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And like, this is the war, this is our World War II. Now, I'll have you know that one of my oldest friends in the world, whom I have known since high school, one of the most brilliantly gifted guys that I've ever known, he has multiple advanced degrees, including a master's in environmental edu uh, engineering. He doesn't believe this. <laughs> He's definitely very concerned about the potential increase in temperature over the course of the next century, but he does not think we're going to be dead in 12 years. That's just stupid. That's just Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Red Cortez. However, since our schools no longer educate, but rather indoctrinate, unfortunately, the last two generations have now been indoctrinated that they're going to die very damn soon. Probably 12 years is about right. Okay, fine. Let's just say that you have until about 12 years until the world is going to end. And nobody's really doing anything about it right now. You have 12 years. That's it. 12 years. And you're dead. So here are your options. First, you can suicide. Now, I mean this. Think about it. If you really think that you're going to be dead in 12 years from, I don't know, burning alive, starvation, dehydration, suicide now is going to be a lot easier death. I'm not suggesting you do that, I'm just saying it's an option. Or you can elect Red Cortez or someone very similar, excuse me, similar to her um, and have a real war on climate change. Now here's the problem with a real war on climate change. The U.S. is not so much of a problem. If you look at these statistics here, and these are very well-known and accurate statistics, you can see that the United States has actually been decreasing its carbon emissions over time, where China and uh, India in particular have been ramping theirs way, way up. Uh, China considerably so, and India isn't far behind them, and this is consistently increasing. The U.S. has, been, in fact, been constantly decreasing over time, whereas these guys have been increasing like mad, as you can see here. So if you're actually going to do something about climate change, you're going to have to go after China and India in that order. Now, let's pretend for a moment that we elect Red Cortez for president in 2020. Now, I know she doesn't meet the age requirement for president, but we're just pretending here. Let's just pretend that Red Cortez gets elected. Now, of course, Red Cortez has the IQ of the approximately of the eraser on the end of, an, of a number two pencil, but she would no doubt have advisors around her who were smarter than that. They couldn't possibly get any stupider after all. And her advisors say to her, Alexandria, um, it turns out the U.S. is just about a drop, drop, drop in the bucket here. We really need to do something about China and India. And Red Cortez says, get me Xi Jinping on the phone, the president of China. And so Red Cortez asks Jinping to stop using fossil fuels. And he laughs at her and he says, you're nuts. I've got a billion and a half people over here. We are just pulling out of some places being a complete pest hole. And we're trying to rival you guys. We need the energy. But please, feel free to go ahead and slit your own throats, cut off your own energy supplies to your heart's content. Because we would, you know, if you're not in the picture, we get to be the dominant ones. And he hangs up. So Red Cortez says, get me Ram Nath Kovind on the phone, who is the president of India. And Red Cortez asks Kovind to stop using fossil fuels. And he laughs. And he says, you're nuts. We're pulling out of being a 
pest hole third world country over here. Some of it is still a pest hole. We'll be working on this for like 10 years. We need this energy. But do feel free to slit your own throats. Feel free. You know, if you're not around, better for us. Well, now Red Cortez is both hurt and flabbergasted. How can they not understand the danger to the planet? They are worse than the fracking Nazis. The Nazis just wanted to kill a lot of people. China and India want to kill everybody. This means war. So Cortez calls the Secretary of Defense and tells him or her to draw up a war plan to destroy all coal-fired power plants and all uh, oil production facilities in both China and India. The Secretary of Defense goes to the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the JCOS works around the clock and eventually uh, send me back to Red Cortez with a war plan. They send me back because I am Field Marshal of the Space Force, which was created under Trump and lucky thing for Red Cortez too, because this war plan is going to depend on space warfare. So I lay it out for Red Cortez and here's how it goes. There are going to be many combatants in this particular war, and not just the U.S. and India and China. On the U.S. side, it will include the United States and her allies, which in this case will be exactly none. And I will explain the reasons for that as I go along. On the other side, our first combatant, China, and its Chinese allies, which will include Chinese clients' states, such as North Korea, which has been kind of interesting because those guys until fairly recently were lobbing missiles across Japan, one of the United States allies. However, in this war, probably Japan is going to be on the side of China for the first time in centuries. Um, Russia will also be one of China's allies. They have been an ally for some time, and they would certainly not sit still for us uh, making war on China without them getting involved. Those guys are particularly problematic on their own borders because of their uh, proximity to Alaska. Also, we'll have Russian client states, of which there are many. In this case, Cuba, which is going in, in particular, which is going to be problematic due to its proximity to Florida. When we make more against India, well, we're going to have the India and her allies. Her allies are going to include Indonesia because it has the largest Muslim population in the world, and they'd probably see killing off the third largest Muslim population country probably is a bad thing. Pakistan would probably become a, uh, an ally of India, which is, that'd be amazing. Those guys have been fighting each other since the, the country was partitioned. Uh, it's been more than half a century. Um, However, if you go around killing a bunch of Indian Muslims, that might make them friends for the very first time. We would also have as enemies, combatants, uh, as allies for uh, uh, India, any Muslim-heavy uh, Middle Eastern uh, country, which is basically all of them, uh, Great Britain, France, Germany, basically all of Europe, because, see, India is now a developing company, country that's kind of westernizing. And it has a lot of different uh, things going on with all of those countries. So basically, we're going to have all of Europe arrayed against us. We'll also have Canada, Mexico, and Australia, and basically everybody in the world arrayed against us because we're going after both China and India. Going after all of these guys means that everybody else becomes our enemy. So we have to have a war plan that takes that into, a plan, into account. So our war plan is going to include the Space Force, the newly created Space Force within the last couple of years. We're going to ramp that sucker up. We're going to start building space stations as rapidly as we possibly can. We're going to build as many as possible because these will act as, as space-based bases for fighter and bomber spacecraft. The fighters, by the way, will be used as escorts for the bombers, and the bombers are going to be used to drop nukes on ter terrestrial targets. And yes, nukes. I'll explain why we have to use nukes in a bit. So we have a fighter spacecraft. We're going to need hundreds of those, if not thousands. We're going to need those for escorting the bombers. And we will need to develop and train pilots. We need to develop the spacecraft themselves because we don't have them now. We don't know what they'd look like and we don't know how they'd work. And we have to train the pilots because piloting a spacecraft is absolutely nothing like piloting an aircraft. They are two different kinds of flying. So um, the spacecraft themselves, the fighters, are probably used as weapons, plain old slug throwers, um, missiles, and some nuclear missiles as well. We will also need bomber, bomber spacecraft by the hundreds. Um, these will be used to fire space-to-ground missiles, in this case, all nuclear, and I will explain why in a moment. We need, uh, we'll need to develop these spacecraft. We don't have them. We don't know what they look like. They're nothing like anything we've seen before. 
bit totally different, and we need to train the pilots to go along with it. Again, these are piloting sh spacecraft, not piloting an aircraft. It is not like you see in the movies, and it is not like an aircraft. Then there's the general strategy. Those are our wars, our weapons of war. We will have the Space Force with its fighter aircraft and with its bomber, uh, not aircraft, spacecraft, and its bomber spacecraft, and the space-based um, bases, space, space, space stations act as their bases. Now our strategy is for targets, we will be hitting all oil refineries, coal mines, coal-fired power plants, oil-fired power plants, automobile manufacturing plants, heavy equipment plants, all military bases, and all centers of population. Now the first bunch of those makes sense, but then you say to yourself, why all centers of population? Well, the U.S. is going to be waging war against every other nation on Earth. The destruction of all population centers is necessary to prevent any level of retaliatory strike. The strategy here is to use one giant massive wave from space to destroy all of these targets more or less simultaneously so as to avoid any retaliatory strikes. And by removing the population centers, which includes capitals, anything that's near a military base, cities really over about 100,000 or so, it leaves the populace with nowhere to congregate and thus shattered and completely unable to respond to an attack. And by using nuclear weapons, that means that we will irradiate these places. We will not just bomb them out of existence and make it so that you could maybe go back and live there. We will irradiate them for a thousand years. And that's what we want on this. If we're going to get rid of, uh, we're going to make a war on climate change, we're going to need to completely decimate populations. Now, certainly, hundreds of millions of people will die. And for China, frankly, this is a necessity. One would hope that this kind of uh, war would reduce their population to about one-fifth of what it is right now. Um, certainly no more than, you know, half a half a million or so, not half a million, uh, 500 million. Certainly no more than 500 million. You'd want to kill off most of them. Now, there would certainly be a lot of irradiated land and uh, some fallout would probably occur. And this may create a sort of a nuclear winter. But uh, considering, you know, that we only have 12 years before the planet burns up, if we had a little nuclear winter, that might actually offset some of the warming. You know, that could be a good thing. The cooling could offset the warming. So nuclear weapons would be a good thing to use in this sort of war. And again, what you do have to remember is you've only got 12 years before the entire planet is destroyed. The whole planet. Millions of people dead and some irradiation is really a small price to pay. So guys, get to work on it. You've only got 12 years. It's either this kind of war or suicide. And that is all I really have to say about that subject for today. And I thank you for watching me. And if you like what I'm doing, please do like, sub, hit the notification bell, and tell all your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. And uh, if you'd like to support me, I have links in my description below for my PayPal tip jar, my uh, uh, subscribe star, as well as a page on my website where you can support me further if you like. So thank you very much for watching. And remember... Get working on those uh, with that war plan, otherwise you're going to be dead in 12 years. <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. And uh, thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch, and my name is Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.